Is a debt jubilee the only way out of the depression? So what is a debt jubilee also called debt forgiveness? A debt jubilee is a clearance of debt from public records across a wide sector of a nation. Such a jubilee was proposed as a solution to debt incurred or anticipated during the 2020 CV-19 recession. A debt jubilee may not be as far-fetched as it sounds. As many Americans today have more debt than they ever hoped to repay. There is no hope. And the CV-19 shutdown has only made things worse. Our incomes have dropped, and we are using more debt to survive, which makes our existing debt problem even worse. That's why a number of public figures are suggesting a radical and ancient solution. A debt jubilee. The problem today is that can kicking yesterday's problems have reached its limit. Over the last several decades, governments across the world have added insurmountable debts. Debt loads exceed 100% of GDP in many countries. The ever-worsening indebtedness and ever-larger interest payments on these unpayable debts, the precise definition of debt slavery. Throughout virtually the entire Western world, we are now well past this point of no return. As far as I can see, this is the deal. Mass credit cards defaults. Mass mortgage defaults. Mass auto loan defaults. Mass rental defaults. So, one of two things can happen. 1. They'll continue to bitch about debt and then damn the only way out of it, which is extreme taxes, slavery, and the assured breakdown of society. Mass bankruptcies, mass evictions, mass unemployment. Debtors' prisons, forced labor. Tent cities, a class of untouchables with an American twist. The problem with that is that Americans are too well armed, and the instant this or anything akin to it pops off, bankers, politicians, judges, and Leo will be assassinated left and right. The societal upheaval would result at the end of America, possibly Western civilization. 2. Complete debt jubilee. Everything is zeroed out. Everyone gets a little something to start out with. Similar rules as before, however, the only reason the powers that be could see in doing this is to stop the destruction of their system. It would not only allow them to continue to play the game for another few hundred years, but would allow everyone else to do something as well. Literally, no one could complain about anything, everyone has been bailed out, and everyone has an opportunity. Before the pandemic, it was the small business owners that helped keep the larger stores in business. If 10,000 of these small businesses do not come back, imagine the outcome of larger chain stores. There will be massive layoffs and downsizing in the larger stores. Many of them will go bankrupt and never recover. Debts which cannot be paid back, simply will not be paid. That's essentially a debt jubilee, whether it is legal, desired or not. Let's see how the banksters like that. Let's have a global super debt jubilee. The Torah, five books of Moses, talk about it, occurring every 50 years. Ancient Sumeria, some 6,000 years ago, had the breaking of the tablets, tablets equals debts, that occurred every 50 years. So why should we forgive all debts? Because the world has about $300 trillion in sovereign debt, that's not including corporate or personal debt. On top of that, the derivatives bets against the markets have a nominal value of $2 quadrillion dollars, if the markets drop a very significant amount. Honestly, who is going to pay all that back? The Federal Reserve is going to print dollars in an unlimited fashion. Think the value of the US dollar is long for this world. Debt Jubilee solves the madness by putting the main street ahead of Wall Street. Any debt created out of the ether needs to be cancelled, government and individual. And the magic money changers never allowed to open for business again. If these riots were at Goldman Sachs, Ben Bernanke's, Jamie Dimon's Lloyd Blankfein's, etc., houses and every Federal Reserve office, I'd be right there with them. They're all running around like a chicken with its head cut off. They are in this mess because they are participants in a rigged up game that allows no winners. Everybody loses here, but most delude themselves into thinking that they will be the winner. A few think that they will break even. Fiat paper currency financial systems always end this way. The greed of people, coupled with their stupidity of wanting to get something for nothing, is what led to all of this. You cannot create real wealth via phony bookkeeping entries, be they in computers or a paper ledger book. It can be created by honest work only. Ever since I found out exactly how our fiat paper currency or electronic bookkeeping entry financial system is really set up, set up to fail, that is, I have been trying in vain to educate people via my various videos about it. And it always falls on deaf ears. No one wants to hear the truth because it ruins their dreams of getting rich quick at the expense of others. Well now, here we are, all of us, standing on the edge of a collapsing Ponzi-style financial scheme, and nobody likes peering over the edge into that black abyss below us. Everyone wants a do-over for free, but there are none here. The smart ones have already made plans for this day by trading in their depreciating fiat paper and electronic accounts for precious metals, including some lead. And food and water, of course. The stupid ones will die off by some means or other, while us smart people will continue on. Debt Jubilee. 
destroy the lifeblood of the magic money system and rebuild it on its rubble. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all specified in their ancient teachings that usury was a sin. Not the modern definition of usury but the classic definition, the charging of interest on a debt. The simple fact is that the debt can never be paid back anyway. When the magic money changers created this money for the debt out of thin air, they didn't also create the money needed to pay the interest obligation. Only through inflation and the continued spiraling debt tsunami can the debt be serviced, but it can never be repaid. It is a pure and simple Ponzi scheme that is enslaved generations, and the saddest part is the cost basis for the slave masters is zero dollars. Just ask the banksters. Before I continue the video, don't forget to subscribe, I'm happy to always try to give you the truth every day. Sorry if I use a robot voice, I'm a girl, and my voice is ugly. Pandemic-driven panic, lockdown enabled economic collapse, record unemployment and crashing earnings expectations, and inequality sparked social unrest. And markets are pushing higher day after day with no rational recognition of risk. It boils down to the wealthy money printing class, demanding we accept their cashless digital totalitarianism. Obviously, they have already swindled millions of people out of many trillions of dollars, and the gap between us and them is huge. They are going to cut off our supplies and force us to slave for imaginary numbers, will the price of everything skyrockets, and that means famine and destitute poverty. They are screwing us over because they can, they have the power to push anyone they want into destitution, jail, or the grave. The seventh-year sabbatical for debt in the Law of Moses was one of the most brilliant but almost never enforced laws. Think about it. If all debts became unenforceable every seventh year, it would achieve several things. 1. Standardize the business cycle to seven years. Everyone knows when it begins and when it ends. 2. This would greatly reduce financial risk by eliminating one of the major unknowns. 3. Forced cleaning of bad balance sheets. 4. Politicians cannot sell future generations into slavery with endless debt spending. 5. Fiat money and banking would be impossible. Debt forgiveness was also practiced during the time of the Old Testament. In Jewish Mosaic law, every seventh Sabbath year, saw the wiping away of all debts, where creditors cancelled all the obligations of their fellow Israelites. Debt jubilee sounds wonderful, lovely, you don't have to pay back your debts, you spent the money you borrowed, but now you don't have to pay it back. You get to keep the stuff and not give the money back. Okay, sounds great. But where's the catch, because there is always a catch. Who holds most of this debt? Well, that would be your pension fund and your insurance company, and your social security fund and your bank that holds US treasuries as tier 1 capital. So, you get your debt jubilee, but you have to live with your insurance company going bust, a complete loss of your social security, the complete loss of your pension, and the loss of your bank deposits. So now that you understand the catch, does it sound like a good idea? Your call. The casino never loses. Missing $21 trillion Pentagon went into Fong stocks. Companies with losses were able to swap their worthless stock for companies that were well-run and making money, subsidized shipping rates, and zero enforcement of any laws enabled the scheme under Obama, green energy scams still running, Enron scam is still running. Public utilities sold for peanuts to oligarchs, prices increased by 400%, artificial shortages to drive prices up. Smart meters for the time of day pricing for soft rationing, peons have to do laundry at 2 a.m., etc. Obama crushed coal power to enrich oligarchs who had the utilities and green scam companies. The economy was rebubbled, recall Fed pumped $14 trillion that we know about, trillions more probably pumped via European front banks, oligarchs can never take a loss. And yes, chosen companies had the road paved in gold for the anti-competition law suspended, federal subsidies, etc. H-1B visas and green cards flooded in. Only chosen companies allowed to remain open during pandemic. Every dollar you make and spend is more debt added to the system. Use it or lose it. The dollar has eaten all of its competitors, and now it is going to eat itself. The epitome of fiduciary gluttony by the Auroboros management system. Governments everywhere giving everyone mountains of money. No, they are not. They are handing us all mountains of debt. Our politicians are just the middlemen, working on behalf of those running this criminal enterprise. Globalists lend essentially worthless digits to poor countries, run by globalist-owned tyrants, at rates of interest that bury them in fake debt. When these countries can't even pay the interest on the loans, globalist banks and multinationals economically rape said country. This jubilee costs the globalists nothing, they already use the fake money to buy everything worth having economically, and this furthers their agenda of evening out the peasant population. The stated intention was to take down the West while raising the third world. I suppose we'll all be in the second world with the new world order if the banking mafia gets away with it? We'll see. Always ask the question. 
debt to whom? There is no money. You work and use fiat debt instruments, promissory note dollars to pay the corporation frauds, mortgage, credit cards, student loans, etc. Debt jubilee is all but baked in. There's no damn way America can pay its debt, nor most of the world. Most will jump for joy, not knowing what will hit them, not knowing it's the bait in the Fed's trap. The carrot on that stick has a ton of strings attached, like how you will buy thereafter, by being numbered, and tagged like dogs. We'll be told what luxuries we can afford, how much food we need, forced to pay healthcare premiums and a list of other mandatory insurance coverages, and whatever else they decide we must buy, like your mandatory array of annual vaccines, all conveniently withdrawn from our accounts on payday. And we thought banks were wrapping us before, wait until we're captured, and they roll out their customer service program. Then there's the surveillance that will be attached at the hip to any debt forgiveness. Basically, we can kiss the constitution goodbye, game over. It is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Henry Ford. Of course, this is going to happen. Anyone paying attention knew this was the end game for at least the last 10 years. Let me know in the comments section below, what you think about the debt jubilee. Is it a positive thing for us mere mortals, or is it just another con game by the banksters? I want to hear your opinions. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, share, and subscribe, and click the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy.